cool video for you today because I'm going to answer a bunch of Cubase questions that I received here on the channel. Let's start this one up. Hey, what's going on? The Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're good. I hope you're well. Before we jump in, I have a free gift for you. If you want to improve your mixing workflow, download my free workshop on how to create the perfect mix template. In this free video workshop, I share with you my own mix template process and also give you access to download a Cubase mix template session that you can base yourself on to create your own mix template and speed up your mixing workflow. The link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and answer the first question. Hello, Chris. If I duplicate a vocal track and manipulate the notes using Very Audio in Cubase Pro 11, I notice that the main vocal track also changes. Is there a way to avoid this? Thanks. Yes, there is. And let me show that to you right away. Now in Cubase, I have this vocal channel. I'm going to duplicate that channel and manipulate with Very Audio the copy of this original uh, vocal recording. Now, instead of duplicating the track, something that you can also do before I enter into uh, into answering your question is to use track versions. Okay, this is something that you can do and you can actually uh, just create or duplicate that version and manipulate that version instead of copying the version. Okay, so this is something that you can also do. But for this video, let's leave it as is with the duplicated uh, channel that we have here. So what I'm gonna do here is to double click on the copy event, but right now it's the same file because that event will represent the same original WAV file that we have in the pool. So the idea is to be able to create a new version of that event so it, you know, so it aims to its own file. So this way, when you're going to manipulate that event, it is not going to affect the original one. So let's start by activating very audio on the copy event. And I'm just going to move things around and you will see that pop up window showing up, which says that the project contains events that use the same audio material as the event in this editor. Click new version if processing should apply only to the edited event. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. You need to click new version. So this way, uh, Cubase is going to create a new file okay, for this selected event. And uh, when you're going to just, uh, um, you know, edit that event with very audio, it is not going to be applied on the original audio event, which is linked to its own WAV file, which is different than the copy. So that is the idea. Now, if you don't see a pop up window when you manipulate a, a copy of an event, what you need to do is to go up up to edit, down to preferences, and under editing, you click on audio and you will see the on processing shared clips. Just make sure that open options dialog is the one selected, but you also have uh, other options. You gotta create new version. So if you want the um, uh, Cubase to create a new version automatically without having that window showing up, you just click on create new version. But yours is probably set up to process existing clips. So you just need to change that to create new version or open options dialog. So I hope that helps. Now let's jump to question number two. How to export tracks as I name them? It's always adding the full project name when I export. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, now let's say I wanna bounce and export this project. I'm gonna open uh, my export panel, uh, which is under file and export and click on audio mix down. And this is the audio mix down window. On the top right of the window, you will add the name of the, the project you're bouncing or exporting. And you have the settings icon right here. So if you click on that, you will have the name in scheme window. And this is where um, that project name is probably uh, listed into the result, okay? And if that's the case, this is what you're gonna see. Because if we look down here, we have the preview uh, tab here, which will show you how the file name is going to look like after you bounce your mix or export your mix. In this case, I have the name and the project. Okay, so uh, if you want to change that, go to the naming scheme settings and make sure that the project name is out on the result and uh, only keep the name. You can add other types of attributes if you want to, uh, like uh, channel number, channel type, channel name, and so on. But for the most part on my end anyways, I always uh, keep that to name and that's it. And the only thing that's gonna show up after I bounce is the name of the file like we see here under preview. So I hope that it was helpful. Let's jump on question number three. Is there a way I can unquantize MIDI notes? 
Yes, there is. Let me show you. So I have these notes that are fully quantized. Now, if I look on the inspector on the side, on the left side of the project window, uh, I have the uh, quantize tab. Okay, so just open the quantize tab and select the notes. Um, out of this recording that you want to unquantize it. It can be all of them or it can be just a few. That doesn't matter. That is up to you. And just click on reset quantized. So it's going to reset the selected notes to its original quantize settings, basically the way they were played. Okay. So without being quantized. So that's the way you do it. So you can do this for all of your notes or just selected notes. This is up to you. So there you go. All right. So now question number four. Hi, Chris. I like your use of colors for different instruments, effects, etc. But it's hard for me to decide how to do it myself. Do you have a set of colors you always work with for various instruments, effects, group tracks, and so on that you could maybe share with me? At least that would give me a good start. All right, so I'm going to show that to you right on a mix session that I have here on Cubase. If I open my color palette, this is what I have. If I open my um, mix, uh, my mix console, I'm going to have like blue. Let's start with blue. Uh, which are drums. So all drum related instruments are going to be in blue. I have uh, this uh, tone of uh, magenta, I guess, uh, which is going to be effects channels like um, uh, like parallel compression or anything that is parallel effects, uh, reverbs, um, delays and stuff like that are going to have this color tone. Um, I have red, which is going to be for my uh, main mix bus, which is on the far right of the mix console and also uh, VCA. Uh, my VCA channels also will be in red. Let's go further. Now we have bass instruments, which are in pink, uh, all electric guitars in orange. And we have our effects channels here and the lead vocal is usually a yellow tone uh, for backs i tend to um to use a green tone and so on so you know to color code your tracks is something like in my book anyways uh, very practical when you're mixing it makes it very easy to go from one uh, section of your mix console to the other uh, you already know right away which instruments you're working on so it makes it very easy to go from one point to another uh, on the right side i have my instrument buses which uh, um, i have uh, a gray tone of color on those tracks um, so again it's just a matter of uh, uh, putting order and having a visual representation uh, from the mix console of all the instruments I have in front of me. So if you want to download my exact uh, color palette that I have right here, you can do so. I'm going to leave the link in the description down below. Um, it's just Cubase session basically that you open up and you apply this uh, color palette straight in your uh, in your Cubase session or, you know, as a default palette for your Cubase, you can go up to project and click on project color setup once you have opened my um, my color palette session and you just click on first of all you're going to see the color set that i have here and under option just click on store color set as default and that will apply my uh, color palette or the color palette of that project on your cubase bonjour chris in one of your videos you drag the uh, bounce event over the original event both events are then uh, hatched when I do that on my project, the drag that one replace the old one. Question, how do you know which one will play? Is there a settings or preference for that? Thank you. Okay, so let's uh, go in Cubase and check this out. So let's say I take this audio event and I just copy it over to this one. Uh, this is what I'm going to get. Okay, so I'm, uh, now I have like uh, uh, those lines uh, across the audio event that tells me that I have uh, more than one audio event on top of each other. So to know which one is playing, it's going to be listed right here on the top left. Okay, this is going to be the name of the event that is playing. If you want to check how many events you have, there's an arrow aiming down in the lower side center part of that event. If you click on it, you will have the list of events um, that are at the same location that are going on top of each other. So the one that is playing right now is this one right here. If I want to uh, have the other one on top, I just click on uh, this one and there you go. Now kick room sample is the one playing. Okay, so this is how you can do it. Something that I usually use in this case is to use the show lane. So I just go on the left uh, left zone in the inspector window 
Okay, click on the name of the channel and click on the show lanes. And uh, in this case, I'm just gonna have to, there you go, bring that down and I'm gonna have like a visual representation of all the events that are on top of each other. And I can then, uh, by uh, clicking with the comp tool, I can just go from one to the other. Okay, so the one that is uh, grayed out is the one that is not playing basically. And the other one that is colored is the one that will play. So basically that's it so i hope that was helpful okay now to the last question for this video hello chris can vst content from cubase be moved to an sd card or flash drive yes you can but i would rather use an ssd drive to be honest with you which will perform better in my opinion uh, but if you want to change the location of the content from an S vst from cubase what you need to do is to uh, open the steinberg library manager so i'm on windows uh, i'm going to click on the uh, window on the top on the bottom left of my windows and go down uh, to Steinberg and look for Steinberg library manager. And this is where you're gonna have all of your uh, Steinberg VST instruments listed and you'll be able to move them around if that is supported by that VST. Uh, for example, if I take electric bass, I can click on details and that will show me where those samples and uh, the content of that VST instrument is stored. If I wanna move that around, I can just click on move and choose another location on another drive of my choice and move that content to this specific location. That simple, so just look for Steinberg library manager all right so this is going to be it for today i hope you enjoyed this video and that the video was helpful if that's the case don't forget to click the thumbs up and if you're new to the channel or you've been watching my content for quite a while and you're still not subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything if you have questions or other types of comments you can also leave everything down below until next time see you soon bye bye